Now this is a long video. It takes a while to make bread. So if you're up to it, stick around. Well, it's that time of year, guys. It's fall, crisp day, and uh, it's cool outside. feels really good, but it's just uh, right now inside the house, I don't have a fire going. We did last night because it got down in the 30s. But it's just that kind of day where you really don't need a fire going in your wood stove, but you need a jacket outside. <laughs> That's kind of weather I like. And on top of that, when it gets this time of year, is when I like to start baking bread again. Summertime it's so hot and I just don't use my big oven very much in the summertime. We had a really hot dry summer this year so I'm really excited to get back to baking bread. And when I bake bread I like to do several loaves at a time to put in the freezer. In this recipe I do several loaves and it also lets you put up some hot rolls in the freezer that way you got hot rolls on hand too when you need them. But I'm going to get started. In this uh, pan here, I've got seven quarts of warm water. And the water is about 110, 115 degrees. If you got it any, if you got it too hot, it'll kill your yeast. So you don't really want it any hotter than that. And I've got eight teaspoons of a dry active yeast. And I'm just going to sprinkle around my pot. And I'm going to stir this. And what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to let it proof, probably for about 10 minutes. And I'm also going to feed my yeast. I'm going to put just a little bit of sugar on top. And just feed it a little bit. That'll help it proof a little better. Not too much, just about a tablespoon. And that's going to help your your yeast to prove. So what I'm going to do is let it sit here, like I said, for about 10 minutes and let it do its thing and then uh, we'll be back and we'll get started. I let my yeast prove for about 10 minutes and like I said, I've got seven quarts of water in here, warm water, 110, 115 degrees. And I put a, probably a little less than a tablespoon of a sugar with my yeast. It was eight teaspoons of yeast. Let it proof. Because what that sugar does, it breaks down and it feeds that yeast. And I, I can smell that yeast proofing. It smells really good. Now I can tell y'all, after making <laughs> making this so many times, the amount of water is always different, it seems like, every time I make it. Um, a lot of times when you make bread, that's the situation. But I've got 10 pounds of, a, now I use a organic, all-purpose flour. It's not even bread flour. Now, if you want to use bread flour, I, that's great. And I do. If I have it, that's what I use. Um, because it does have a little better texture, lighter texture, use your bread flour. But this is just an organic. I buy it in bulk from off of Amazon. And I'll try to put a link to the kind that I buy because I'm telling you, it's really good stuff. But I've got 10 pounds of it. And I've got a big uh, tub here. And I use, I got this thing at a flea market and it looks rough. But I use this thing for so many different things. Now, you will have to have a, a big tub like this or some kind of a, you can even use like a one of them plastic big containers that you get at the dollar store or something. Just as long as it's big enough to hold 10 pounds of flour and uh, your water and you're able to mix it. Now, I have doubled this and put 20 pounds and I had to use a big uh, one of them big plastic totes from Walmart to do that in is what I have to do it in. And it's a lot of work, but it makes a freezer full of bread and rolls. So, But anyways, we're going to start with 10 pounds of flour this time. What I'm going to do is I just made me a, a little well right here in the middle of my flour. Now I've got a half a cup 
of raw honey. And it come from my brother-in-law's beehives, Bobby Joe. And I'm going to put this in my water with my yeast. I would rather use good raw honey than sugar in my bread. And I like to put, I like a little sweetness in my bread. Not a whole lot. I don't want a sweet bread. It just seems like if you put a little honey in with it, it kindly helps take out a little bit of the yeast taste. So a cup at a time, I'm going to start putting this in. Now I haven't put my salt in yet. Because sometimes when you mix salt with your yeast, it'll kill your yeast. Or not kill it, but it will stun it. I'm just going to start pulling this. I had about four cups of water and yeast I put in there. I'm just going to start pulling this together. I got, I'm got. i going to leave this hand clean or try to for just a little while. Use this hand to start pulling my bread together, my flour. I'm going to put another cup or two. And just start pulling it together like this. I love making bread. It's just so relaxing to me, especially a big a big uh, bunch like this to have so much sitting around proofing and then when you get it all in the oven it's baking it just it's wonderful now I can tell you I've got a day to my own today is Saturday Benny went fishing uh, I didn't have to run to town and do anything which is a good thing because I don't like to um, the kids and the grandkids are all doing good. So I've got the day to myself. So, what better thing to do, I thought, than to go ahead and put some bread in the freezer today. Mr. Brown's not here <laughs> to uh, keep me aggravated. Which I mean by that, I don't mean aggravated as mad, but he likes to aggravate me. Keep me going on other things that keep me from doing stuff that I really want to do. And it's not that it don't, it always needs to be done, that's for sure. And I'm the same way with him. I tell you, when the weekend gets here, we're not having to be at work. It just seems like we're always trying to get caught up. So doing things that you really enjoy and want to do, it just kind of put on the back burner, but that's just part of it. Or homesteading. You have to do what you do. You see, my hands are getting pretty sticky. But it's the only way you can do it. you got to get in there, get your hands sticky. And you just keep uh, pulling and pushing, pulling and pushing until you just and you'll be able to tell when you get enough water in there. You know I I've read stories, and I do a lot of research. I always have for years. I'm a foodie. I'm what you call a foodie, which means I do a lot of, and I have since I was young, uh, research and studying, and that's why I have so many cookbooks. I go online and I research, and it's just a, and it's that way with my gardening too. Do a lot of research, and it don't matter how old you are and how long you've been doing stuff, you're still learning. So 
So now I've got both of my hands in here. And it is a sticky job, that's for sure. Now I got a lot of kneading and add more water and kneading and it does take a little while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off my hands and I'm going to finish this. When I get back I'll tell you how many cups of water I used and by then I should have my bread all kneaded up and mixed up. But it takes a while and I know y'all don't want to sit here and, and watch me do that for 20 minutes. So we'll be back in just a little bit. It took about four quarts of my yeast water and it's all worked together now. Now at this point I need to put my salt in and I have an eighth of a cup of salt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this in there and I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put just a little bit of, I'm going to olive oil on my hands. And that's just going to help from getting big old clumps of sticky dough on it. Now that I've got my salt on there, I'm just going to start mixing and, and kneading and mixing. The one thing I don't want to do is to have to add more flour to it. It's just one thing you don't want to do. If you have to, yes. But it was four quarts of yeast water. And then I put an eighth of a cup of salt in here after. I'm just going to knead that up. Just keep pulling it. Pull it to you. Over and over. And it does take a while. So you do need a day to yourself. <laughs> That's for sure. I got this uh, horse tub, dish, dish tub, or whatever they used to call them, at a flea market. And they're pretty expensive, the old ones are. But when I found this one, and it didn't have any holes in it, I went ahead and got it. And I'm pretty sure... I got it for under 20 bucks. I just can't remember the total price. But I'm just going to keep working this and kneading it. And I'm going to do it 15, 20 minutes. So if you need a good workout, this is it. Just keep pulling it to you. And like I said, if you feel like it's too sticky. You can add, sprinkle just a little bit of flour on top until it gets to looking smooth. In fact, I may have to. I'm just going to keep working it. I think I'm going to get me just a little bit of flour. I'm going to keep working my dough. And I should have it done, and I'll show you what it looks like before we cover it up and uh, let it proof. I kneaded this dough for about 15 minutes, and uh, it's all come together. It was a pretty good workout. I ain't done it <laughs> all summer, so I usually do this big batch. Of course, it's me and Mr. Brown. And unless the kids come out, you know, putting bread in the freezer lasts us a while. So I'll do this about three times a year. And it keeps us in rolls and uh, bread. Now, I say three times a year, but usually if I do it, I do it in 20 pound batches. So this is 10 pound. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cover this up. I put a little bit of oil around my dough and I kind of flipped it over. So that there's a little bit of oil on top. Like I said, I need it for about 15 minutes. And cover it up with some plastic wrap so it won't stick to my cover. And then I'm going to cover it up and I'm going to put it in a warm spot. 
and I want it to double. And the temperature it is today, I really don't know how long it's going to take. Um, an hour or more. We'll see what it does in an hour. If it takes a little more, then we'll see. I'm going to take this blanket and I'm just going to cover it up like a little baby. Put it to bed. Keep that warm in there since I don't have any fire in the wood stove today. And I'm just going to stick it over in a warm place. And let it do its thing. And uh, we'll see how long it takes and I'll tell you when we come back. And then we'll start making our loaves and uh, our hot rolls. And we'll go from there. Okay guys, we're back. My dough has risen for about two and a half hours. I got busy in the house and uh, it's pretty much doubled or more. You see how much dough I've got. I got busy and doing other things and I just let it go ahead and rise. Just as long as you don't overproof it. I'm gonna put me just a little bit of oil on my hands. And I'm gonna just pull this dough away from the sides. You can see the bubbles. Now, <clears throat> tell you the truth, because I've never, I don't know if I've ever looked that up. I'm sure there's a certain weight for a loaf of bread this size. And right now I couldn't tell you what it is. I just know by sight and feel. So what I'm going to do is like I always do. Let's take me out some bread. Dough. Put it right here on my dough cloth. Don't sprinkle much flour on your bread, just enough to keep it from sticking. And I'm just going to roll it out a little bit. I have to put just a little bit more, just keep it from sticking. You don't have to push on it or be rough with it. I want to get it to about the size of the bread pan on the width. And I'm just going to take it and roll it up. I'm going to put it in my pan. And I oiled my pans. I'm going to put it in there like that. Now it's going to get a second rise now. Do it one more time. I'll show you. I love playing with dough. <laughs> I guess y'all can tell that by now. Now I like to have a few air bubbles in my bread because it'll show up. In your bacon, you'll, you'll see the little air bubbles, the little holes in your bread, like a sandwich bread. Mm -hmm. So you just want to get the width of your pan, and that's about right. Just roll it up towards you, hold under the mm -hmm. edges, and clock it in the pan. Now I'm going to do three more loaves, so I'll have five loaves of bread, and then we're going to do the rest in hot rolls to put in the freezer. I've got my five loaves of bread. I got them in my pans and I've got them sitting over here by the heat. Got them covered up. I'm going to get them to a second rise. Now I'm going to make some hot rolls to go in the freezer. And how I use these is if the, say the kids come over on Sunday and I need 20 rolls, I'll just take them out of the freezer and uh, I'll thaw them out and let them go through the second rise and then I'll bake them. Because 
even though our bread is going through a second rise right now before I bake it, our hot rolls aren't. They're just going through a first rise and then into the freezer for me to package. So what I'm going to do, and this is many years of cooking in a school cafeteria, a pinch and rolls. And y'all seen me do this before. You just bring it through your fingers and you just pinch them. Just like this. Between your, your thumb and your pointing finger. And you will need to put a little bit of flour or some oil on your hands ever so often. Because it will stick. But it's just a real easy process. And it's so convenient to have your own homemade hot rolls ready to bake just like you would buy in the store. And I can't tell you right now for sure how many hot rolls I'll get, but when I'm done, we'll, we'll count them and see. But sometimes <laughs> mine aren't exactly the same. Some are bigger than others. But uh, it's just another, another way of convenience and uh, another way of self being self-sufficient because you know we're all busy and there's you don't have time to come in every other night and bake bread or make a batch of hot rolls so this helps a lot excuse me for my sniffles I'm still got a cold I guess Allergies one, I don't know. Been going on for a couple weeks. But I'm just going to keep pinching these rolls. And once I get, get them all pinched, I'm going to stick them just like this out in the deep freeze. And I'm going to let them freeze solid. And then I'll bag them up in a gallon freezer bag. That way... When I want a few, I'll just take them out and bake them once they're thawed out and proof. About that easy. So we'll be back in just a little bit. So far, I've made five big loaves, regular loaves of sandwich bread. I got them on their second rise right now. I've got, I made, um, 40 hot rolls, and I've got them in the freezer. I want them to, to freeze all the way through before I bag them up. And now, I think, I've got these little loaf pans. I think I'm going to make, we've got some sick people in church, and this would be good for gifts. And you could freeze them. Give them out at Thanksgiving or Christmas, either one. So I'm going to make some little big loaves for our Elderly sick people are charged. I took some, uh, I had made a big old pot of homemade soap last weekend. And uh, I just, I had made so much and I didn't have time to can it. So I did give some of it away. I put it in mason jars and uh, give it to some of our sick people in the area. So, let's see. I'm going to cut this in threes. Get them in the pot. I'm just going to roll them up like this. And stick them in the little, cute little pans here. They're so cute. A lot of times I'll buy these little bread pans at the dollar store, Dollar Tree, at the holidays, and make... Uh, banana nut bread, pumpkin bread, just regular, any kind of bread. And then you can give them as gifts, wrap them up. So I'm going to let these go for another second rise. And I think, you know, I was thinking, I've got two. This is what I've got left. And I'm going to be making homemade pizza this week. And I think this would make a pretty good crust. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to 
I'm going to work this just a little bit. I think I'm going to use this other two little batches. And I'm going to make me two crusts. And I'm going to roll them out. Then I'm going to stick them in the freezer like I'm doing my hot rolls. And uh, actually, I think I'll par bake these. And then I'll cool them off and put them out in the freezer. And I can come in from work and make me and Mr. Brown a pizza. So that was a pretty good idea. So I'm going to get these rolled out about the size I want for pizza crust. And then I'm going to par bake them. And then I'll bring you back and show you <coughs> how you can do that and then wrap them up and put them in your freezer and use them for later. Okay, all the bread's going in the oven. 350. I'll check it in about 30 minutes. My rolls, I just got them out of the freezer and they're, they're good and frozen. And I'm just going to bag them up and stick them right back in the freezer. And uh, when I need some hot rolls, all I got to do is pull out how many I want. Uh, let them thaw and rise and stick them in the oven and I've got hot rolls about that quick. So it's a good thing. I just love it. For convenience. It's very frugal, and uh, it's just nice to have these things on hand. So this is what I got out of 10 pounds of flour, and pretty much anything else that you would have on hand, no special ingredients. I got five loaves of sandwich bread, and I made three little bitty loaves for for gifts and if I wouldn't have made little three little loaves I'd had six loaves of bread put in the freezer and then I've got 40 little hot rolls ready to you know however many I need to take out of the freezer thaw and bake just like you'd buy at the store and then back there in the very back wrapped up in a freezer wrap that is two pizza crust that uh, I rolled out and I par baked and then I wrapped them up because sometime this week me and Mr. Brown's gonna <clears throat> have homemade pizza so uh, there's my pizza crust right there all I had to do is put my my sauce and my toppings on it stick it in the oven and uh, we'll have some good pizza so that's what I got out of 10 pounds of flour today and what I like about it all this can be put in the freezer it saves money, it saves, saves time. Uh, if you got a holiday coming up, it'll be great for that, especially the hot rolls. You'll have them done, you'll have them in the freezer, and you won't, that'll be one more thing you won't have to worry about on Thanksgiving Day or Christmas or whenever. So there it is, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I know it was kind of long, but, you know, when you're... <laughs> When you're making bread, especially this much bread, it uh, it takes time, and you can't you just can't put it in a little short 14, 15 minute video. But uh, it's a good thing. If y'all liked it, give me a thumbs up, please. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that y'all watched, and watched all the way to the end. Because I think if you ever make a big batch of bread like this, you'll love it. And you'll do it again. God bless everybody. And have a good week.